gonna charge this because today we're going to Vida. Queen! What is up guys? Today we're going to Vidado because I want to be documented for you guys. Another Contras video, another versus video. But this time we're going to be filming the contrast between the rich neighborhood and the poor neighborhood. Disclaimer, this video now is not about, you know, discriminating other people, the Cuban people actually love my country, I love my people. All the countries, they have poor places and richest places. Thus, so that's what this video is about. I'm gonna try to show you everything about it, both places, so you can, at the end, let me know in the comments below what do you think about it. But first, let's charge the motorcycle. All right guys, so let's start talking about the place where I'm currently in. And this one is one of the most expensive places right here in Havana. By the way, I know that my face max today is a mess, but I'm sorry. It was the first one that I got. It belongs to Plaza de la Revolución Municipality, one of the 15 municipalities right here in Havana. And I'm talking about El Vedado. I don't want to be talking to you about El Vedado from a historical perspective because, you know, this channel is about a local point of view. Now, from a local point of view, guys, this is the place where you will see rich people. I mean, in Cuba, we have rich people, right? But this is the place where you will find mansions, most of the political, uh, buildings, uh, for example, right here in Vedado, we have the television center, uh, the radio center, everything important on Cuba is in this place. This is the place where I would love living, or maybe Miramar, which is another expensive place to live. Remember the video that we were talking about the real estate? Well, actually, this is one of the most expensive places to buy real estate right here in Cuba. If you want to buy an apartment like this one, for example, you have to pay over $200,000. And it's not going to be super fancy or something like that. It's going to be, you know, something nice enough. Because maybe it has a great view to the sea, to the Malacan, and that's enough to be paying a lot of money for. For example, let's say that you want to be living right here if you want to rent. A house right here in Vidalo is going to cost you over 600 bucks per month for a house. That's if you're Cuban. If you're not Cuban, woo, 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 a lot of money, man. And of course, guys, that for example, inside of the Vidalo, you're going to still have the Solares and multifamily buildings. But most of them, if you have a look, there are going to be mansions. There are going to be super expensive houses, or they used to be super expensive houses. But now, they belong to other people. Why? Because after the revolution, all the capitalists in those times, they went out of Cuba. They didn't like living in Cuba with the new rules. And then the government took those properties and we have some important villains, some embassies, some important people living in those places. Um, Hola. Veronica's father, he lives right here in Ovidado. And if you follow me on Instagram, most of my stories in the Malacan is from his point of view. I mean, house. <laughs> but it's great. And of course, it's an expensive apartment. He lives here because of the family. But like I said, if you want to buy an apartment like that, it's going to be extremely expensive. Cheers. Now you might be wondering, Alex, the people who live in that place, in El Vedado, what do they do for a living? Well, guys, like I just said, most of the people I would say they live here because of an inheritance inheritance because of an inheritance because for example in Cuba it doesn't work like for example if you were a doctor and you're an engineer you're gonna be earning more money than other people it's not gonna be working like that actually Veronica is just a doctor and she can be earning the same that some engineer or sometimes the engineer is gonna be earning uh, less than a doctor right so in Cuba, it's not like, hey, you have a lot of money, you have to live in that place. Remember that Cuba is communist, which means that everybody should have exactly the same. But in this, in this case, if your family used to be living in Del Vedado, so now you live in Del Vedado. Of course, that your house is gonna be, uh, I mean, the value of your house is gonna be super expensive than uh, other places. Just completely 
normal. In El Bell, you're gonna find La Plaza de la Revolución, the Cementerio de Colón, um, the National Hotel, which is one of the most famous and expensive hotels right here in Havana, and buildings like that. El Habana Libre, El Foxa, which are the tallest buildings uh, in Cuba. So it's kind of one of the perfect areas to live. Some people call it the famous area. Why? Because right here in the lado, we have 23 IM or 23 and M. And right there we have the ICRT, which is a television and radio, radio and television institute. ICRT in Spanish will be something like that. Instituto Cubano de Radio y Televisión. And all the actors, all the actress, famous people, they go there every single day. And, you know, it's very common right here in the Vedado that you can be walking and you can see some Cuban famous people. Simple guys, right here, this is El Vedado, right? Right there, we have the Malican, all right? And this house over here is falling apart. Like I just said, you can find stuff like this one. But at the same time, you're gonna be living in an apartment like this one but a great view. That's why we can call a days that Vedado is one of the best places in economic development, culture, and society. In Havana, we have so many rich areas. For example, we have Siboné, which is inside of uh, Playa. We have Miramar. I think it's inside of Playa too, right? Mm. Uh, well, Fontanar. Fontanar is in Boyeros, but believe me, it's so beautiful. I mean, it's far, far away from here. But it's so beautiful. Like I just said, Bedavo is almost the perfect area to live. Architecture, people, location, yeah. everything. Look at this. This is one of the view that you can buy right here in Bedavo. And I think that you're not gonna find this in any else. That's why it makes this place one of the most expensive places to live. Actually, I will live, I will love Actually, I would love living right here instead of living in Miramar or living in Playa because to live in those places where you can find people with a lot of money, believe me when I say this, with a lot of money, you're not going to have this. Now, most of the people who live in those places like Miramar, Playas, most of them, they work in embassies, they have, I don't know, companies in other places, they have some facilities that the typical Cuban do have. I've got so many people asking me, hey Alex, if I would love living in Cuba, first of all, can you do it? And the answer is, no, you can. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna be that easy. There are some tourists that I know that they live directly in Cuba, but they have a couple of their marriage, their marriage with some Cuban uh, girl or some Cuban uh, man in this case. And it's not easy because let's say that you wanna buy a house right here in El Vedado, which is gonna be extremely expensive, right? You have to be married with uh, a Cuban, and then if you want to sell that house at the end, you you're, you're not going to be able to do it because the owner of that house is going to be the Cuban, even though you're married, right? So it's not easy. I mean, that's what I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you have another information that I that I should know about it, right? But so far, living in Cuba is not that easy. If you want to buy a house, if you want to get uh, a beach house right here. That's what I know from my local perspective, right? If you know something about it, if you know something about it that I do know, no, let me know in the comments below. In this video, we're not gonna get inside, you know, inside of some people poor house because I have a bit about it. Actually, from my point of view, there are only few areas or zones that we can call rich neighborhoods. Like I just mentioned it, for example, Fontanar, Siboney, Playa, Miramar, Plaza de la Revolución, El Vedado. There's another one that is not super expensive, but there are some uh, wealthy people living there, which is Santo Suarez, and it's inside of 10 de Octubre, the municipality where I'm currently living. In places like this one, you can find rich people, or let's say people with a lot of money living right next to a poor person, and it's completely normal. 
maybe if you want we can make another video about the real poor people how do they live right here and we can talk to some local let me know in the comments below and we can consider making uh, another video about it for example exploring areas like la lisa maria now which from my point of view are poor zones or what i consider poor zones people there they don't have you know a good living some do but most of them are not like super well so maybe we can make a special video for you guys let me know in the comments below what do you think about it and we can make it if we ask the same question what the people who live here do for living it's exactly the same they have maybe the same job but it's just a different lifestyle what i mean by this is that you can find in this area teachers engineers doctors they're not going to be making a good living of it some of the people that are, you're going to see uh, they're not making a good living they're really poor most of them is because they come from this side of the country looking for a better lifestyle right here in Havana. It's exactly the same for the Cubans who go out of Cuba looking for a better lifestyle. In this case, let's say, United States. Look at that house over there. That house, that's a mansion. And we are in Itature. And right here, you see the house over here? It's not the same, right? I have a read about it. And in that video, we were doing a comparison between the tourist area and the local one. And you're gonna see contrast like this one all the time. And of course, in terms of construction, buildings, architecture, they're completely different. Do you remember at the beginning of the video when I said that, uh, let's say buying an apartment in El Vedado will be costing about over 200K? Well, in this area, it's not exactly the same. With that money in this part of the city or in these neighborhoods, the rest of them, let's say that you can buy 10 apartments with 200K. So if you think about it, yes, there are so many differences between living there and living here in this part of the city. But we are all Cubans, passing through the same and feeling the same. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Alex Rodriguez and hit the like button help me with YouTube subscribe if you haven't already talk to you guys and see you in the next video ciao pecao hey do not forget have a look to the links down below talk to you see you in the next one ciao pecao